I am an African, I am a Nigerian, and I moved abroad. And within the first few months of moving abroad, I suffered a severe mental breakdown, and of course, I was depressed. The accommodation, getting accommodation will stress you. It will depress you when you have a job for five months. That's, that's depression. Anything that touches my mental health, I will leave it. Hi guys, welcome back to today's video and welcome back to the channel. My name is Genevieve and if you're meeting me for the first time, nice to meet you and welcome to the channel, welcome to today's video. Please subscribe to my channel <laughs> and I'm going to make this video a very short one. Okay, let's just jump right into it immediately, straight up. I've seen a lot of videos on this particular issue, on the reason why immigrants, Africans especially, are depressed and they are mostly depressed when they are abroad okay there's a lot of conversation around it i am an african i am a nigerian and i moved abroad and within the first few months of moving abroad i suffered a severe mental breakdown and of course i was depressed at some point there was depression somewhere depression entered somewhere <laughs> so i'm going to be sharing with you some of the reasons why immigrants especially africans to nigerians are depressed abroad generally first of all when you land this country there's a lot of things that you're going to be seeing culture shock the weather the food the loneliness the lifestyle all those things you know have their own part in playing in making people depressed so if people don't manage all of those prevailing circumstances properly depression might kick in so that does not go to say that it is the same for everybody because people moved here and they had family they had support and a couple of other things that they had and they were still depressed while some people didn't have any of those things and they were not depressed now not everybody suffered depression or had depression but borderline somehow somehow I think most people get depressed for different reasons. So I'm going to be sharing some of the reasons why uh, Africans or Nigerians abroad are depressed. First of all, generally homesickness, you're away from family, you're away from your relatives, you're away from your parents. You can imagine leaving behind every single person that you have known, like people that you have known for a very long time. And um moving to a new country that's a lot to be depressed about and for people who didn't um, feel homesick i give it to you people but homesickness is one of the reasons why people get depressed when they move abroad the harsh weather the harsh weather the, ha the harsh climate conditions back home in africa nigeria we have, we have better weather in africa we have better weather in nigeria so if you're not used to you know the harsh exposure of the weather it can make you sick in fact generally winter is depressing winter is very depressing so winter can just make you depressed like that that's just on its own without you doing anything so the harsh weather is one of the things that is going to can make people depressed so watch this video to the end because the most important thing i'm going to say is at the end of the video i'm leaving it at the end so that you can come to the end which is the main topic the main reason why people are depressed in their abroad i'll leave it at the end okay migration and the process that comes with mig migration is not really easy um the highs and lows you know the whole tumblings from planning to visa application and every of those things somehow it's very unsettling and by the time you land the country that you were trying to migrate to and most of the expectations that you had that made you to hustle or that hustle to migrate if those expectations are not met as immediate as you wanted them to they can depression can set in in my own case i thought i was going to work immediately i thought i was going to start working immediately but then I didn't start working immediately. I started working like five months after. So imagine for a single person who is just here all by themselves. I also had a friend who didn't work for five months and we started working the same time, the same job. So we can imagine that I'm here and I'm single and I didn't have a job for five months. 
that's that's depression. That's that was that's madness. That's crazy. Because the bills are piling up, there is house rent to be paid, you have to feed, you have to get your transportation sorted out, a lot of things. And there is school fees to be paid if you've not paid your finished paying your school fees. So these are the things that can make somebody depressed in this country. Manage your expectation and the information you get. One of the things that depressed a lot of immigrants during the, the people that came two years ago, one year ago, like we all came, see accommodation. Getting accommodation will stress you, it will depress you. And because you're trying to, you're in a fix, you might end up settling for a, a, an apartment that you really don't like or does not serve you, but just for the interim, for you to get a roof over your head, you just settle for it. So that can be really, really, really depressing. So I think better information, information will help you to also manage your expectations. Right now, anybody who is coming to, to abroad, I'll tell you, while it is possible for you to land a job immediately you get here, or even before you get here, I also tell you to manage your expectations because it's not as if jobs are like leaves. You enter into the farm and you start plucking them. That was the mindset I had. Like, there are jobs, there are jobs, you move, so you get jobs immediately. There are jobs, certainly, but it's not as easy as, you know, it's not like you walk in the park, you just go. The amount of, unfortunately, you will receive before getting the job first. So, I think just manage your expectations. But now, to the elephant in the room, most of the reasons why many Africans and Nigerians are depressed abroad is because of black tax. Do you know what black tax is? Have you met black tax? <laughs> black tax is just a responsibility back home waiting for you. So that as you are working hard wherever you are in any foreign country where you are, you are paying some people back home for different reasons. Either because they were there for you, either because it was community that come to contributed money, your family contributed money for you to travel or put you through school. Like you are the first person out there for the entire family. And as you're working, you have to be supporting the family. See, if you live abroad and you don't have any financial obligation to people back home. Now, I don't mean honoring your parents or, you know, gifting people things. I mean, obligation. If you don't send money, this food will not eat. If you don't send money, they will not pay school fees. If, if you don't have that type of financial obligation, you really don't know what God did for you. Because have you asked people that have black tax how they pay black tax? <laughs> I see people walking and walking and walking and walking. I was speaking to a friend. She told me, so you don't look like you're in the UK. I'm in the UK oh, and I'm stressed though. Forget, forget all this one, so I'm stressed. She said she has to work so hard. She, she's doing two jobs. She works back to back, round the clock, because she has to send money back home. Her siblings, her parents, she has to send money back home. If you see her, oh God, she's stressed. Like, if you don't have black tax, I don't know. Hey, if you don't have people who are financially dependent on you, like you have to pay black tax every month. You don't know what God did for you. Because this is now, now this is the elephant in the room. So I know some persons may have known, you might, you might know what it is, but it's popularly called black tax. You can just Google it, black tax is popular. I think it's originated from South Africa. But then it is popular among the blacks because our white colleagues, they don't care. Everyone is living for themselves. They don't, they don't care. So while I will not trivialize the circumstance of people who are in that position where they have to send money to their relative, but this is what I would do. If you, if you followed me for a couple of times and you've watched my video consistently, you would know that anything that touches my mental health, I, I will leave it. Your whole world will be fine. <laughs> so if I'm black taxing, and if I'm paying black tax, to the point that he's touching my head, right? I'm going to have to call family meeting so that my family members and I were going to strategize on how I'm going to stop paying the black tax. Because sometimes you will continue to pay this black tax and the people that you're paying this black tax to, especially siblings, they will never graduate. They will never graduate from receiving. For parents, it's dicey. It's very dicey. I'm not going to touch on the topic of honoring your parents. I'm not even going to go there at all because, I mean, most times parents are deserving of it. In fact, generally, the Bible says you honor your parents. I'm not even going to go there because I don't know what to say. But what do you really owe your siblings? 
love, do what you can do for them. But putting yourself in this position whereby you are a mess because you're paying black tax. Like at the end of the month, once you manage to sort out your bills, you send the rest home, you have nothing to show that you're working. That is where you, whatever you've gotten yourself, then you really need to have this conversation with yourself and your siblings. Because this, my friend I mentioned in this video, there's something she said. She said that she's not doing it again. That she's not doing it again. That she's going to talk to her siblings. Everybody, go and, go and find, your, find your way. I'm not doing it again. And as difficult or as insensitive as I may sound, I really agree with her. Because how long do you really want to continue? You need to see her. It was a mess. And that is the story of so many people. They will tell you, I've not been able to do this. I've not been able to do this because I have to send money home. I have to send money home. I remember when my mother, my mother paid black tax. My mother paid black tax. She will pay to mother, father, siblings, her siblings' children. My mother paid black tax. And I saw what it did to her. I saw what it did to her. You know? So, you have to have this conversation with you. Nobody is going to tell you when you've gotten up to here. But once you've gotten up to here, you have to be able to draw the line as to when it is or not and when it is birthday. So, like I said, our white counterparts, right, they really don't have the type of um, family, well, I say family connections that we have in the way that we care about our family members as if it is us who is there, if you get what I mean. They really don't care about, or they don't do, or they don't do it to the extent that we do. That doesn't make it right or wrong. But what I'm saying is, black tax does exist, and it exists more in black people. And it is depressing so many persons who are abroad. Google black tax. Find out the meaning of black tax. But it's just pain from the family. Now, it gets me to my own question. Is black tax honor or burden? Because we understand the way the African society is cultivated. We understand the way we live as Africans. That is an obligation to look after your parents. That is an obligation to, um, you know, take care of your parents in the African culture. Biblically, there's also blessing that comes with honoring your parents. But you know also that there is honor and there is burden. That's why I asked, is it honor or is it burden? Is it burdensome? Because how is it that the first person who graduated or got a good job is carrying the whole family? And that person will not even go far in life. You will not go. The person will struggle. I'm not saying that people don't succeed doing it, but people are so burdened that they are getting depressed. And... It is a very touchy topic that I don't even know how to say it without being insensitive. Because personally, I'm not, nobody is depending on me financially from home. Not like I don't send money to people, not like I don't give to people money. But what I'm saying is there is no obligation for anybody to send money like monthly or something. If you get what I mean, I don't have that obligation to service some persons or my family members or my parents or my siblings there is no obligation and i'm grateful for that so when i say things that I'm, I'm about to say don't think that i'm being insensitive as a matter of fact i'm trying to put myself in that position where i have to cater for a lot of people what would i do to save myself so while i say my mom paid black tax my dad paid black tax to my parents paid black black tax i saw them carry the entire family, carry their siblings, carry everybody along. And today I will ask myself to what end. In fact, they are black, the black tax they were paying suffocated us as their children. Like they will put, literally put my cousins first before us. Literally put other people out first before us. I see my parents do things like that. And the people you put first before your children, we are dick. It's still your children that you have. So I am using that particular thing that happened with my parents. I need to talk to anybody who finds themselves in that position. Trust me. If you don't put yourself first and your family first, you're going to regret it. Some persons don't regret it though. 
you might come back boomerang and it will come back as goodwill and sometimes you find out that you've wasted your time but while you're waiting for whether it will come back or not i think you should just make tactical plans tactical decisions whether it comes back or not so that you make sure that you're not burdened because it is that burden if you don't draw the line it is that burden that leads to depression Okay, so I'm not going to stretch this more than it is because it's very touchy, it's very dicey, and somehow I don't know how to separate not crossing the line to parents and siblings. So, this is a very dicey and a very touchy topic for me. And no matter how you see it, no matter how you want to see it, it's definitely going to be up to you to know and draw the line as to when to stop and when not to stop and what to do and what not to do. You have to call the people who are involved and genuinely express how difficult this thing is for you if you must. And explain to them that all man has to fend for themselves last, last. Because you can't die. If you die, they will move on. If you, if you die, they will move on. The world will move on. So, I don't know if this video answered any question about this whole depression issue and I hope this video also helps you to find a way out. You really don't have any of the day. Trust me, you don't owe anybody anything. Hear it from me. You don't. I'm not stressing this. Thank you for watching my video. I'm not going to even say so much again. Thank you for, for coming. I'm leaving. People. Okay guys, see you in my next video. Bye-bye.